Okay, so in this session, we are going to discuss on root locus technique or root like root locus method, which is topic three, root locus method. Then uh, these are the uh, sections of the root locus method topic three that we are going to discuss huh? in this. Uh, maybe we will finish this around two or three sessions or maybe four sessions huh? to finish all of these uh, sections in the topic three. So basically, I will start with introduction, and then the root locus concept, the root locus procedure. That is the three. There are the three uh, subtopic or section that I'm going to discuss. But uh, I'm still writing the or uh, preparing the lecture slides and lecture notes, eh? because this is the first subject. Uh, start. Uh, this is the first course that start in this this is the new course that starts in that start in this uh, in this semester that begin in this semester so i'm a bit struggling uh, preparing the lecture notes lecture slides so uh, even the assessment questions also uh, but i'll share with all of you later okay so to begin with this uh, topic three root locus method, let me just uh, read. Uh, there is a book here. There is a book, which is the Control System Engineering Principles and Design, which was uh, published by UTHM, eh? Penerbit UTHM, written by Zamri Omar, the lecturer that teach the control system at UTHM. He wrote this book. He wrote this book. So, ada satu topik ya, kenapa? There is a topic which is control system design using root locus. So, in the introduction about this topic, dia kata apa eh? Macam saya baca kat sini ya. Let me just read it. In control system design, it is often necessary for us to evaluate the control system performance when the system parameters are changed. Okay, so it is necessary for us to evaluate the control system performance. Uh, performance mean uh, we want to make sure that stability is its best. Okay, so that the system is at its best performance. So when the parameters change, then we need to review it back so that we can identify what is the suitable parameter to make sure that our system or our control system design is stable enough or it's performing at its at its best condition okay then put the list sini most of dynamic systems have one or more parameters that are not fixed okay so Let's see uh, this canvas here. For example, for the spring mass damper system here, as you can see, the transfer function. Okay, the transfer function of the spring mass damper system can be written as GS, which is equals to the ratio of YS by RS. Okay, so we get this equation. And of course, the denominator here represents the characteristic equation of this particular spring mass damper system all right so you can see there are some uh, parameters huh? some parameters here which is mass friction and also a constant which is spring constant okay let's say uh, there are some parameters that might be changing like friction okay friction might be changing because uh, let's say if we put some lubrication, some oil in, so that uh, the friction uh, may be uh, less, uh, lesser than the previous one. Okay, so uh, for the mass as well, if we change uh, the mass of this particular object, okay, katalah pat uh, pat atas ni ada asalnya ada seorang ah duduk atas ni kan, tambah lagi seorang, tambah lagi seorang. So of course, pada masa tu dia punya mass sudah berubah. Dia punya parameter is already changed. Okay, 
So most of the dynamic system, like this system, which is spring mass damper system, is one example of the dynamic system. Uh, th this sort of dynamic system should have uh, not only one, but more parameters. Eh? More parameters. And those parameters are not fixed. Maksudnya, parameters tu sentiasa berubah-rubah. Okay? For example. Okay? For example. One example is the mass and center of gravity of a rocket. Ah, uh, not fixed. Sorry. Of a rocket vehicle are uh, altered after part of the rocket fuel was used. Okay, katalah ada rocket. Eh? Launching of the rocket ke angkasa lepas. Eh? Kan ada satu tangki, minyak. Okay. Dia pakai minyak apa? Hydrogen could be. Hydrogen liquid. Okay, this is the tank, eh? fuel tank. Let's say uh, before the 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 berlepas tu, before the berlepas tu, let's say fuel tank dia dia bagi berat m lah. Eh? So bila dia dah naik, bila dia dah naik, okay, bila dia dah naik ke udara, it is no longer m for its mass because some of the fuel Dah berkurangan. Okay, some of the fuel has been reduced. So, we cannot consider uh, the case when it was at the initial condition. The mass. Huh? So, the mass already changed because of the uh, fuel. Huh? Fuel has been used for launching, for example. So, that is the first case. The first example. Which is the mass and center gravity of a rocket vehicle are altered after part of the rocket fuel was used. Right? Second example is the car vehicle are altered. Uh, the car's weight, oh, sorry, the car's weight will depend on the number of passengers. The car's weight depends on the number of passengers. When I drive this alone, we the mass m okay so i got another passenger coming in two passengers the mass is no longer m it could be some uh m plus these two passengers weight okay it is no longer constant eh, for this particular system's parameter all right. That is the second example, and uh, the third example is uh, he talk about the resistance and inductance, uh, resistance and inductance of a circuit of a circuit will be changing of the circuit. Uh, let's say uh, the inductance. And also resistance component of the circuit will change when load is changing. When load is changing. When we change the load, the L and R component will be changing. Okay? Alright. So that's it. That's that are the three examples. Huh? That are the three examples given in this uh, discussion. Huh? The discussion about introduction of this book. So, what did the um, what did the res researchers or scientists do? Because of the changing, which when we uh, changing of the uh, parameters, the performance of the control systems also changing. So, how do we the what did the uh, engineers or maybe some uh, previous researchers do is to introduce the graphical method. Huh? Graphical method we call it as root lockers, uh, used to. Study the change of linear system performance due to the changing of system parameters. Okay. The root locus.
is the graphical representation. Graphical representation in S plane. We have S plane here. Uh, when we do the transfer function tadi, YS, RS for example, we have the transfer function in S, right? And we have got the trust characteristic equation. We've got the characteristic equation. We plot the root of the characteristic equation, which is we call it as poles huh? and zeros. So this is going to be the poles, for example. That is the poles. Let's say the uh, data uh, nominator also, we got some roots. We call it as zeros. Okay, so this is the representation of uh, in terms of uh, S plane. Eh? Okay, S plane here. I have the S plane and I plot all my roots here from the characteristic equation we call it as pole represented by panka by the cross like this. Okay, this is pole and the circle one. That is the zero, okay? Which is the root zero is the root of the nominator, and poles is the root of the denominator or characteristic equation of that particular transfer function. So we we'll present this. So this representation is actually not. Not yet, we can call it as a uh, root locus. Root locus is uh, some kind of representation of locus that has lossy. Lossy. Huh? So, lossy. So, let's say this is the lossy or locus or path. Huh? Locus, path, lossy. Okay, the lines here. Yeah. The lines. Huh? So, this is the root locus. This is the root locus. Example of the root locus. So what uh, uh, the inventor, uh, the somebody who start the root locus was Mr. W. R. Evans eh? in uh, some uh, late 1940s. Eh? late 1940s w r evans the uh, device uh, the method of uh, finding the stability okay finding the stability of a control system when the parameter change so we call it as the root locus masih baik dia tak guna nama root apa uh, evans root locus ke apa tak ada dia tak bagi nama dia eh? Setengah tu dia bagi nama dia kan. Tapi yang ni dia bagi nama sebagai dipanggil root locus lah. Okay. There is a little bit of introduction which is related to this book. Okay, which is related to this book. Not uh, the introduction uh, related to the uh, textbook. So if you go to the textbook... Uh, Topic 7, chapter 7, if I'm not mistaken. If you go to the uh, textbook, chapter 7, you will see uh, the introduction that I have summarized here in this slide. So, to begin with, um, I'd like to start uh, with the uh, my lecture notes here. Let me open my lecture notes. Here, side by side to the uh, lecture slides. Huh? Okay. So, uh, as you can see, introduction 3.1. The first point is uh, the relative stability of the transient performance of closed loop control system are directly related to the location. Huh? Location of the closed loop routes of the characteristic equation in the S plane. Okay. Uh, for the control system, the stability, the stability of the control system and the transient performance of the control system 
which is normally we are referring to the closed loop control system. Eh? Some uh, control system is the open loop control system. But normally, uh, stability is related to closed loop control system because uh, it has the feedback. Eh? It has the feedback. Let's say if you have the control system like this, see, example here. Let's say if I have the summing point here, which is, for example, this summing point is coming from the D, DS, which is the disturbance. Let's say this is the disturbance. If there is no disturbance, meaning that D equals to zero, so uh, let's say uh, this control is system is considered as stable based on the our earlier design. For example, we determine the K, the parameter K here, we determine the parameter K, and then we get our system uh, performance is stable. Huh? No fluctuation, uh, no instability, okay? So after some time, uh, because of the uh, outside environment, uh, some disturbance coming in, so we have, uh, some other variable here. So this is the uh, another parameter that we need to consider. Because of this disturbance, uh, our system might be changing its characteristics. And then and finally, we uh, found that our system is not no longer stable. Okay. So that is the thing uh, that we we'll need to consider when we uh, deal with the control system design just in terms of stability in terms of stability okay so it's another case all right Okay, so that is the first point. Okay, the stability of the uh, stability and transient performance of the closed loop uh, system is subjected to the uh, roots, huh? subject to, to the location of the closed loop roots, closed loop roots uh, of the characteristic equation of the S plane. Okay. So, we are talking about the location of the closed loop roots of characteristic equation. Okay, closed loop roots of the characteristic equation. So, meaning that we are talking about about what? Poles. Huh? So, pole determine the stability of the control system determine the stability of the control system but it, we also need to combine it with zeros as well but most of the time i'll be talking about poles eh? most of the time i'll be talking about poles okay so for the second point it is uh, frequency necessary sorry it is frequently necessary to adjust one or more system parameters in order to obtain suitable root location so we will need to, uh, from time to time, adjust our system parameters in order to make sure that uh, even uh, the parameter is changing at that uh, uh, any range, for example, as long as the parameter is within that particular range, our system is stable. Okay, so uh, from time to time, it is necessary for us to adjust uh, uh, the system parameters to make sure that um we can get a suitable uh, suitable root location so that our system is stable the point number three here this worth worthwhile to determine how the roots of the characteristic equation of a given system migrate see another keyword which is migrate about the s plane migrate means uh it is moving moving about s plane as the parameters are varied so that is the useful 
So it is useful to determine the locus of root in the S plane as a parameter is varied. So uh, when uh, when we talk about uh, the stability, we will need to define the location of the poles. Okay, but Actually, it is more important we trace the path of the pole when it is moving because uh, when we change the parameter, the pole's location is moving across or inside the S plane. So, it is important for us to visualize how that pole is moving in that S plane in order for us to understand our system so that uh, for any case of the change of parameter, then we can just refer to our root locus to make sure that we select another suitable uh, pole so that the parameter is back to its uh, initial condition, its uh, stability condition. <laughs> so uh, the definition here I put in bold the root locus technique is a graphical method for sketching the locus of roots in the S plane as a parameter is very. Okay, the same thing ya. Yeah? So I do ulang, ulang, ulang. Supaya uh, uh, ingat lah. Okay, by definition, what is root locus technique? It is a graphical method for sketching the locus of roots in the S plane as the parameter is very. Set as long as parameter is not varied, as long as that parameter determines the stability, as long as at that parameter the system is uh, stable enough, then we don't need to, to think about the root locus. Okay? So, root locus is important when the parameter change. But most of the time, for any system, of course, it is subjected to the change of parameters. Okay, so in fact, the root locus method provides the engineer with a measure of the sensitivity. Huh? The keyword sens sensitivity comes in. Measure of the sensitivity of the roots of the system to a variation in the parameter being considered. All right, so let's go back. To this particular classical uh, drawing, this is uh, 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 most of the textbook, they will use this sort of uh, representation uh, to discuss about root lockers. So basically, we have our system with input RS and output YS. And here we have a closed loop feedback uh, transfer function, closed loop feedback system, control system with unity eh? this is unity unity feedback ah unity feedback unity feedback eh? we have this system with unity feedback and we have k parameters k is the parameters of the system gs is any process lah any process gs is any process eh? okay uh the vehicle control system, for example, GS, huh? any process lah, that involve maybe could be motor, uh, could be any uh, uh, acceleration of something, okay? Anything lah, huh? GS is the process, K is the parameter, so we present this. So in terms of the uh, transfer function, we can derive the transfer function. Enak padan ni sekejap eh. Okay. So G is the process. Eh? G is the process. Process uh, model. So we can get the transfer function using this equation. Ys over Rs. This could be for example Hs equals to Ys over Rs. Then. Uh, by using this uh, closed loop control system block diagram for this particular case with negative feedback so this is negative feedback 
control system uh, as we learn as we learn in our past uh, topic in the mathematical modeling for the system with negative feedback uh, feedback system like this we can derive the transfer function by using this equation uh, which is k times gs uh, k times gs divided by 1 plus uh, 1 plus because of the negative feedback here because of the negative feedback is 1 plus if it is a positive feedback so suppose that uh, the characteristic equation will be 1 minus kgs for this case <clears throat> for this feedback control system since it is a negative feedback control system so we can just derive the equation as 1 plus kgs uh, for the characteristic equation okay so now you know that 1 plus kgs here is the characteristic equation so further okay further let's say for this particular characteristic equation so let me just write again this is the characteristic equation the denominator characteristic equation for denominator here is the characteristic equation 1 plus kgs okay for this 1 plus kgs for this characteristic equation uh, it is necessary to adjust k in order to obtain suitable root locations we can change k to get the suitable root location to get the suitable root location we can change k let's say let me change k by a, a simplest method which is uh, by trial and error let's say i put k equals to zero then i get the solution of root equals to what okay then i put k equals to one k when k equals to one s equals to what the root is changing right when k equals to two and another root is root is changing its location okay so when we change k when we alter k when we uh, use different number of k then we get different uh, pulse location then we can plot the pulse location as cross huh? uh, along the uh, s plane here this is imaginary eh? this is imaginary this is real okay this is the s plane eh? real is sigma imaginary is omega okay so in this s plane s, s plane we will see that when we change the uh, number the value of k then we see the location of the root of the characteristic equation is changing so let's say this changing along this path, huh? along this path. Then we can plot, huh? we, we can plot it, the green one, huh? green one. Then we can plot the path. This is path. Huh? We can plot the path so that we call it as the locus or root locus. So that is the root locus. Okay, so in a padang sikit eh. Okay, padang sikit eh. Okay, empat belas satu. Warna hijau. Okay, so that is the root locus. So that uh, when we varying K, uh, by varying K, we can observe now the roots migrate about S plane. So the term migrate is used here. Migrates mean it is, it change its location. Dia berpindah daripada satu lokasi kepada lokasi lain. Eh? Migrate. Eh? Okay. There is a path. Eh? Ada laluan. Ada lines. Eh? That is as shown in the as plane here. So, when we vary uh, the uh, value of K, so the location of the poles also changing. And we can see that path exactly as like that. Hmm. 
so root locus is about uh so what is root locus it's, uh, when we talk about root locus huh, for this particular topic so we can imagine that it is about something uh could be uh sketching okay some something about sketching there is a topic uh, a subtopic or section about root locus technique where we need to do some sketching yeah, on the s plane yeah. uh, hand hand sketching lah, menggunakan hand calculation and do the sketching manually okay manual sketching of the root locus okay so uh, in uh, modern world now we can use uh, software lah. we can use software one of them is the most powerful one that is normally used uh, by many uh, users lah. many engineers for example they also using the MATLAB lah. MATLAB, eh? uh, whether it's an engineer or anybody studying uh, control system, they uh, will, 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 will try to, to make uh, their problem solve easily by using the MATLAB. <clears throat> so far, we haven't started MATLAB yet. But basically, uh, for this uh, control system course, we need familiarize with uh, MATLAB, eh? using MATLAB to solve our our problem based on, uh, for example, when we were, when we are trying to to plot uh, the root locus of any particular any system or any problem, we can do uh, MATLAB based sketching, uh, MATLAB based sketching by putting some code some codes uh, in the MATLAB uh, M5, for example, and then when we when we compile it, we will see the plot of the graph. Uh, is that is the thing that we can do. Uh, 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 other than the, do the manual sketching, but it's still important to uh, to study how to do manual sketching by following some rules of uh, plotting the root locus. Eh? That is the uh, important because uh, when we do the manual sketch sketching, our understanding is uh, uh, will be uh, better. Will be uh, let's say if you proceed directly to the MATLAB, then you will not see uh, the concept, uh, the concept clearly uh, because machine will do it for you. But when we do the manual sketching, for example, <clears throat> I hope we can have some time to uh, to exercise ourselves uh, doing the manual sketching of root locus by using hands, uh, by doing it manually so that we can understand. Uh, further about the concept of uh, plotting the root locus okay <clears throat> so root locus another thing is about graphical representation lah. other than the sketching of course we represent it in terms of graphics in terms of graph huh? in terms of uh, plots like this plots like this huh? plot like this that is the graphical representation lah, that gives some information about the uh, poles location for uh, any particular system okay and also from the root locus we can determine the performance stability uh, system performance uh. Uh, system performance is it a good performance or uh, just fair uh, performance or bad performance uh, so and so forth we can determine it based on the root locus technique the fourth one is we can measure the sensitivity. Let's say if I have K at some range, for example, uh, K at this range, the system is stable. Okay, when K is, uh, uh, let's say when K is equals to nine in this case, my I, my my system is not stable now. So it is sensitive. Eh? It is sensitive because it will work uh, stably within that range only and then if we change the parameter and we, we also change the sensitivity or stability of the system okay by definition uh, based on the uh, Sifu Dorf uh, uh, what he said in the book uh, that he wrote the root locus is the path of the root of the characteristic equation traced out in the S plane as the system parameter varies from zero to infinity. 
Okay. From zero to infinity. Eh. Kalau dekat uh, sini. Dia agak umum. Eh, which is quite general. Parameter is varied. But in this book. Eh, what Dorf said is zero to infinity. Which is clearly states that if we change the k. The parameter k change from zero to infinity. What we'll see. Uh, what happened to the characteristic equation? What happened to the uh, root in the characteristic equation? Yeah, ada kata eh. So this is what uh, Dorf said in his book, okay? Which is uh, maybe uh, 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 multiple choice question or fill in the blank question I can give. For example, fill in the blank. Huh? What is the 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 blank here? You can fill in lah. Alright. So that is the definition of the root locus. So we finish 3.1 introduction. Based on this lecture notes, I will share with all of you later. With this video recording also, I will upload uh, in the Google, Google sites. Okay, there is another uh, points here, which is uh, actually... Uh, some other information which has which is I have already uh, discussed uh, tadi just now in the, my lecture notes uh, which is about uh, when we talk about root locus we actually talking about the graphical information uh, the sketch uh, the graphical representation the stability so and so on okay then we end up this uh, introductory part with the definition of the root locus technique based on the uh, Dorf book, uh, Dorf textbook, he said that the root locus is the path of the root of the characteristic equation traced out in the S plane as the system parameters varies from zero to infinity. Okay, that's it for introduction. <coughs> now moving on. <coughs> Sebelum moving on, uh, saya nak pause dan uh, saya bagi rehat sekejap dalam lima minit, okay? Okay, moving on. Uh, I'm going to talk about 3.1 which is the root locus concept. Right? So, uh, see in these slides, huh? there are some points here. So, to evaluate the dynamic performance of this system, this is an, uh, 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 we are familiar with the, this system uh, normally uh, appears in the textbook. So, to evaluate the dynamic performance of this system, this particular system, Firstly, we determine its transfer function. Okay, we will go through on how to determine this trans the transfer function and uh, proceed with discussing about the concept of root locus later using this block diagram. Yeah? But uh, second point here, recall that the transfer function can be represented as polynomials. Polynomial. You remember about polynomials? You find it in the, we have uh, touched about it a bit uh, during our session related to uh, mathematical modeling. Okay. So you will find some polynomial, huh? polynomial. Uh, uh, you should go back to mathematics, huh? engineering mathematics, for example, if you don't remember about polynomials. Huh? So because uh, that is the basic huh? about uh, when we want to determine the poles and zeros of the transfer function, we need to deal with polynomials. Huh? So, transfer function can be represented as polynomial in S. Huh? In S. S is the complex uh, operator, complex operator, which is S equals to sigma plus J omega. We call, sometimes we call it as uh, S plane. Lah. Most of the time we call it as S plane. So polynomials in a function of S with the root of the numerator called zeros. Numerator, the root S equals to buffer, S equals to 1, 2, so and so forth. For the numerator, we call it as the root. Huh? For S, number of S or a root of the numerator, we call it as zeros. Okay, And then uh, the root for the denominator. Uh, in other words, denominator 
we uh, should use the characteristic equation. When we talk about characteristic equation, uh, I'm actually talking about the denominator of the polynomial. Sir. Okay. So for the denominator, the root is called as the O. Sir. The root is called as O. Sir. So <clears throat> I hope you can understand huh, the difference between zeros and poles. How do we represent zeros and poles? Okay. In S plane or S domain. <clears throat> okay, point number three here. Poles determine the stability of the system and thus it is important to sketch how the poles migrate in S plane. That is what we call as root locus. So root locus is uh, like what we have established our understanding about root locus in the previous uh, discussion, the previous explanation about uh, in the introduction. It is about uh, the migration of the root on the S plane. Okay, so we need to do sketching, yeah? sketching so that we can understand what region is for S is stable enough, which region of S is not stable for that particular system. Okay, so we will start with the root locus concept. As you can see my lecture notes here, I'm scoring now my lecture notes. I am scrolling down, further down. So I hope that I can finish this in one hour, maybe less. Okay, maybe around 50 minutes I should finish this. <clears throat> okay, so 3.2. Uh, 3.2, root locus concept. Huh? So root locus concept. Huh? Okay, uh, maybe uh, I will be, maybe uh, some of this note actually I repeat. What I have uh, I've mentioned in my previous uh, uh, explanation, okay, but actually, is this something that is uh, you should uh, always uh, rem remember and memorize? Eh? What what is uh, uh, especially uh, when we talk about when we discuss about concept, the thing is that uh, something you should understand, not only memorize but understand. That is why I keep repeating. Uh, uh, all of those things so to make sure that you are not only memorize it but also you understand. Okay, so in a control system design, uh, design uh, said here in control system design. Okay, the dynamic performance, uh, dynamic performance. Dynamics means something is changing. Uh, in engineering, of course, we are dealing with dynamics of the system. The dynamic performance of the closed loop control system is described by the closed loop transfer function. So this is the closed loop transfer function that we are talking about. So let's say I have this closed loop transfer function with unknown parameter of A. Okay, let's say this game could be something like a controller something. Okay, GS is like a process, huh? like I told you earlier. Yes, is process, K is unknown parameter, and the output of the system is Ys, and input is Rs, okay? So again, this is the negative feedback closed loop transfer, uh, closed loop system, negative feedback closed loop system, <clears throat> and then it is a unity feedback, eh? unity feedback. So unity feedback, sama dengan yang explain sebelum ini juga. So we have to deal, we try to deal with uh, this uh, control block diagram of the control system uh, in more details. Huh? Just now I just explain, uh, not very detailed. Okay, so in more detail, we try to describe about the concept of root locus technique. So to evaluate the dynamic performance of this control system, what we do is firstly, we define its transfer function. Huh? What we do is, is uh, we define the transfer function of Ys and Rss, R of S, R of S, huh? ataupun Rs lah, Ys over Rs equals to, okay, simply Kgs over 1 plus Kgs. Kenapa dapat ni? Mungkin ada lagi yang tanya, kenapa dapat ni? Go back to the a block diagram that we have discussed in the topic 2 mathematical modeling for this particular uh, closed loop system we will get the transfer function of like this huh? this form huh? which is kgs over 1 plus kgs 
GS is the polynomials in S. Okay, GS is polynomial in S. Uh, we can represent GS uh, whether it is some process or plan or whatever. It is a model of a car, for example, the rocket uh, launching, for example, anything. Uh, anything. As long as uh, we can represent it in terms of mathematics, which is uh, in the form of polynomials huh? in S. So GS is polynomials in S. So from the transfer function, the roots, huh? the root, okay, the root of the characteristic equation determines the modes of response of the system. Modes of response, according to the textbook, modes of response of the system. So the root is important here. In the transfer function, what determines the characteristic or uh, the stability, the modes of performance of the system, it is the root of the characteristic equation, not the root of the zeros, not the root of the uh, nominator, numerator, not the root of the numerator. It is the root for denominator or characteristic equation. Okay, from the equation here, we have, uh, where is the characteristic equation? From this equation, the characteristic equation is supposed to be 1 plus kgs uh, is the characteristic equation. So now we want to determine the root of characteristic equation. So 1 plus kgs is the characteristic equation. Here we need to define the root of 1 plus kgs. 1 plus kgs, which is called as PO. Root of characteristic equation. Huh? We call it as PO. Huh? So, um, what is PO? Huh? What is PO? <clears throat> For this uh, transfer function, 1 plus kgs yang denominator itu adalah the project characteristic equation when we want to determine the poles we make this uh, denominator or characteristic equation equals to zero okay so when we want to determine the poles of the system which is actually we want to determine the uh, denominator to be zero okay let's say we have transfer function tadi ps of over QS, for example, we want to determine QS equals to zero so that uh, this equation approaching infinity. Betul tak? Kan? Itu maksudnya poles. Eh? Itu maksudnya poles. Okay. So, when the, the P over zero, this is the transfer function tadi, D of S, for example, when we uh, we put 1 plus kgs equals to 0 then we define what is s okay what is the root so that to make sure that this gs is approaching infinity okay so maksudnya uh, pulse itu sebenarnya kita nak determine pulse by defining the root of 1 plus kgs by uh, make this equation equals to zero. So in the control system design, what we are doing is we are trying to look for the poles of the transfer function. The pole of the transfer function meaning that the, uh, the roots of the characteristic equation. So I'm going to pick up one example of the characteristic equation here. Let's see if I have this equation as a characteristic equation. So I have this uh, equation of S uh, as my uh, characteristic equation, which is S cubed plus 4S squared plus KS plus 1 equals to 0. So, K is my parameter. Okay, system parameter. 
k is my system parameter, I have this characteristic equation. Uh, so the definition of the root locus is with when k is changing its value from zero to infinity, when k is varied, when k is varied, how about s? How about s? How about root? Huh? How about root when k is varied? Let me just go uh, slowly here. We have two questions here. <clears throat> In terms of design, for example, when I want to vary the value of k from 0 to uh, infinity, we can uh, ask two questions. Okay, The first one in terms of design. Since k is unknown, what value of k should we choose to meet our system uh, performance requirement? k is unknown. Okay, k is kita tak tahu. Sama ada k sama dengan 1, 2, 3, 10, 15, 20, 28, 17. Okay, k kita tak tahu value dia. So, kita nak tahu uh, apakah value k yang buat sistem kita itu meet the system performance requirement. Let's say we are, we are given the performance requirement when we design a spring mesh damper system. Eh? Where we design a damper system. Example, this is my damper system. Uh, spring damper. Yang digunakan dalam kereta lah. Let's say, this is my spring damper. I am designing this with K as parameter. Saya so, design ni dengan K dia punya parameter lah. K will be the friction, uh, something like uh, uh, frictional force for example. Okay. What is the K uh, if I have been given that uh, uh, absorber ni saya nak pakai dalam kereta Mercedes. Saya nak pakai dalam kereta Mercedes. Apa value K yang paling sesuai? Okay. Based on the uh, system performance dari segi mungkin uh, kereta mewah kan mungkin masuk dalam lubang dia macam stable lah. Kita langgar bonggol pun kita tak rasa apa kan. Uh, itu system requirement lah. Uh, performance requirement. Okay. I should design. As an engineer, what I do is I should determine what is the value of K should I select. So that meet the system requirement. Uh, meet the performance requirement. Because I want to use that shock absorber to be used in Mercedes-Benz punya uh, kereta. Bukan kereta kereta apa? Bukan kereta biasa-biasa eh. -biasa, uh. Tak boleh sebut nama kereta nanti ada yang sensitif. Uh, okay. So, that is the thing in terms of design lah. In terms of design. So, what engineers do actually, takkan dah dia nak buat macam ni kan? Takkan dia buat uh, macam ni. Dia cuba try and error kan? Okay? Nampak kan satu, sampai bila pun tak siap kerja dia kan? Betul tak? <laughs> sampai bila pun tak boleh nak manufacture that uh, spring damper system ataupun Uh, shock absorber untuk Mercedes tadi kan. Jadi uh, yang saya nak cerita kat sini okay, in terms of design we can ask uh, this is one question for in terms of system of system design. Another question is <clears throat> what is the effect of variation of K on our system? This is uh, directly uh, related to sensitivity. Sensitivity okay what is the uh, effect of variation of k on our system katalah kita dah pilih 1k okey katalah 1k uh, k sama dengan 8 untuk shock absorber tadi tapi katalah k ni ada variation eh, antara 5 hingga 10 contohnya apabila contoh uh, kereta tu masuk ke dalam lubang yang agak besar untuk lubang-lubang yang kecil jalan 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 kampung kat Malaysia okey ah kan uh, certain kawasan eh masuk ke kawasan pedalaman sikit adakah kereta Mercedes tadi dia boleh uh, boleh berfungsi dengan baik dia punya shock absorber tu dia bila dia masuk ke kawasan yang agak rough dia punya jalan okey nampaklah kat situ bila dia masuk ke jalan agak rough uh, masuk ke kawasan 
yang ada jalan yang berlubang besar-besar bila dia tu dari segi F-Shot Absorber tu mungkin ag agak challenging lah. So, situ kita lihat uh, apakah effect of the variation of K. As long as K ni tak ada variation, katalah uh, K sama dengan 8. So, sistem tu stable. Boleh digunakan jalan bandar raya, apa, jalan bandar, jalan yang stable. Tak ada masalah. Katalah bila uh, K itu var ada variation, macam mana dia punya sensitivity? Adakah performance dia masih stable? Adakah performance dia cloud? So, that is the effect of variation. Huh? So, we want to know these two things when we do design, uh, when we do uh, design of the system, we want to know in terms of design and in terms of effects of variation. <clears throat> Let's say in terms of design, uh, I would like to try to pick up any value of K for this characteristic equation. So let, let's see, uh, we do some try and error, okay? Okay, let's pick up a value of K here. Saya pick up value K sama dengan kosong. Okay, K sama dengan kosong kat sini. Untuk my first equation here, I pick up K equals to zero. So for the K equals to zero for that equation, then saya dapatlah saya punya plot kan. Saya punya plot kat bawah ni, kalau tengok, uh, mungkin K saya kat sini. Ini uh, untuk kuadrat, uh, bukan kuadrat eh. S cube lah. Eh. S cube equation, maksudnya kita ada berapa roots. Kita ada tiga roots lah untuk K. Let's say I have my first pole here. When K is equal to zero, uh, my root, I got here uh, three roots lah uh, of poles lah uh, I have here. Let's say this is the, sorry. Okay, that is uh, the location of the poles when k equals to zero. And then, on the purple. And then, I do it again with k equals to one. k equals to one. For this characteristic equation, then I evaluate it. Then I got uh, another value of k of poles of the root. I got another root. Okay, another root on the S plane and so and so on when uh, I vary another K here to K equals to 2 then I got another root I got another pole on my S plane then vary it again again and again until uh, until uh, K is infinity until k is infinity k is infinity bila k tu sampai infinity what happen we repeat the process of getting k uh, uh, what is k that we want eh? okay we find what is k that we want lah for the design for the design so katalah uh, until sometime we got a uh, good stability when k equals to uh, up to k equals to 4 here, we already got our system stability. So, we can plot sehingga 4 points ni lah. We can plot. So, the root in my design is somewhere, uh, dia, dia punya path macam tu. Dia punya path macam tu lah. Let's say that is the first first one lah, the design lah, in terms of design. What is the value of k? that we will need to determine to make sure that uh, our system design meet the uh, performance requirement. Now, uh, what is the effect of variation of K on our system, which is the sensitivity? So, uh, in terms of sensitivity, tadi saya capai satu, satu point yang mana saya, saya punya sistem dah cukup stable lah, saya buat tukar color sikit warna mana kan habis color dah dah habis color orange lah ok tadi kita dapat k sama dengan 4 tu masa k sama dengan 4 uh, pole uh, location tu kat situ kan so kita dah dari segi design ok lah dari segi design ok so how about the second one the effect of variation of k 
on our system. Kata K, K tu uh, berubah. Uh, so macam mana? So pada masa ni lah kita kena buat dia punya uh, lines ni. Lines ni. Okay. We connect all the uh, value of poles together. We connect, sambungkan poles tu. Sambungkan dia. Okay. Kita buat macam tu eh. Maksudnya kita buat laluan lah. As long as the follow the right path here, the system is stable lah. In term of stability. So, the root locus is basically, it's about the drawing lah. The drawing on how the poles move uh, through the S plane as we vary the value of K. Okay. So, itulah yang dimaksudkan lah dari segi konsepnya. Okay, to better understand, sebelas tiga puluh dua. Okay, to better understand uh, the stability, the stability. Kita tak masuk satu topik berkaitan specific topik about stability ya. Sebab after topic one, uh, topic one introduction, topic two, uh, mathematical modeling. Now I just jump into topic seven. Okay, topic seven for this syllabus. Takkan saya nak ajar semua dalam buku teks tu kan? Tak ada masa. Okay. So, saya pick up this as one of the topic in my syllabus. Which is the third topic for the root locus. But actually, if you go through, uh, you will see some other topic that discuss about stability. Discuss about stability, how you can interpret the uh, location of the poles on the S-plane. Okay. So, saya nak sentuh sikit sini ya. Eh. Explain sedikit. <coughs> Supaya kita faham stability. Eh. Let's say, uh, saya ada satu, bukan robot lah. Saya tak nak guna robot. Paling senang, kereta lah. Okay. Satu kereta. Okay, saya nak pergi pada yang ni ya. Eh. How to interpret the location of the poles in the S-plane. So, for example, I have a motor PID control. Motor PID control is electronic controller. That is use in motor driver for example let's see i have motor pid controller control <laughs> controller when we want to design for example mungkin some of you might be one of the engineers of tesla for example okay uh, so when you work for tesla cars tesla inc so you are an engineer to that uh, company you has been asked to design the traction control lah. Traction control lah. Bila kita pusing, kita punya steering, uh, macam mana dia punya response dia? Katalah, uh, saya nak turn kereta saya ni ke kanan lah. Right turn. Right turn of my car. So, <coughs> dalam control system, of course, kita akan ada uh, reference, which is input. Yang ni lah yang dikatakan sebagai CS tadi. So, input lah. Input. And then, output adalah our actual lah. Our actual value. Ni output. Ni in, output biasanya YS lah. Okay. Output YS. Uh, input adalah CS lah. Tengok balik kat sini ya. Eh. Balik kat sini. Mana tadi? Okay. Control system kita. Input ada lah. Saya tak guna. Saya guna CS tadi ya. Eh. Output is YS. Input is RS. Let's say saya guna RS lah kat sini. Hmm. RS input eh. Input maksudnya reference lah. So we give the reference here a step function. Step function katalah uh, uh, motor tu saya bagi dia 5 amps current. Sorry 5 volt lah. Ini katalah ni current eh. So saya bagi 5 amps current. Okay, untuk sekali pusing kona tu, sekali kona tu, katalah saya nak kona 90 degree kona untuk kereta saya tadi. Okay, saya kena berikan uh, reference tu 5 amps. Eh? 5 amps reference. And then output dia, of course, perlu response. Eh? Perlu response kepada 5 amps punya reference tadi. 5 amps punya reference ni, output dia perlu respond. So, saya ada tunjukkan tiga jenis respon ha, bergantung kepada value of K. Okay. Let's say 
uh, yang hijau ini adalah respons untuk k equals to 0.5. Saya set dia punya parameter ataupun gain. Eh. Gain itu adalah 0.5. Dia dia punya respons macam ni. Right pada bawah. Hmm, naik ini. Kalau kita calculate error. Kalau kita calculate error. Yang hijau ni berapa banyak error dia? Of course lah yang hijau tu. Dia punya error merangkumi. Yang ni kan. Kita bandingkan dengan reference lah. Itu dia punya error. Untuk yang hijau tu. Untuk path yang hijau. Untuk response yang hijau. Dia punya error tu bahagian tu kan. Banyak ke sikit? Nampak banyak kan? Okay. So saya nak padam balik itu. Nanti kacau. Okay. So. Itu respon untuk yang hijau. Let's say saya tukar K saya kepada 1.1. 1.1 yang uh, warna apa ni? Biru lah. Warna biru ni, dia punya respon macam tu. Dia naik, lepas tu dia overshoot sikit. Dia turun sikit je, lepas tu dia terus stable. Yang K equals to 1.1. Bila saya tambah lagi K, uh, saya tambah lagi dia punya gain, adjust lagi dia punya parameter. Dia punya respon overshoot yang amat tinggi lah ha? overshoot yang amat tinggi dan dia punya oscillation tu boleh nampak dengan jelas ha? oscillation dia nampak ni sign function dia tu agak nampak dengan jelas in terms of frequency ya. mau naik dua baru stable sampai kat sini baru stable eh? yang biru tadi sampai kat sini dah stable lah dah stable kan yang uh, hijau pun uh, belakang sikit ha? kat situ baru stable ok So, paling stable dalam kes ni adalah yang mana? Yang biru eh. Yang biru ni adalah ya, respons yang paling stable. So, saya dapat lah. Saya dapat value of K dalam design saya untuk untuk uh, 90 degree corner tu saya dapati uh, sistemnya punya design K sama dengan 1.1 adalah paling stable untuk respons kepada uh, sudden change of direction of the car at 90 degree uh, at the, the 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 sharp corner 90 degree okey untuk respon pada 5 n situ saya dapat n tu okey now <coughs> so that is the system stability lah so now in this example for example k is equals to 1.1 give the most stable response So in the S plane, how to interpret our stability, our stability of the system in the S plane? So soalan yang uh, saya akan tanya, uh, bahagian mana hmm. dalam S plane itu adalah bahagian yang paling stable? Bahagian mana uh, bahagian dalam S plane itu adalah bahagian yang paling stable? Let's say katalah saya punya pole location yang pertama. Pole location saya adalah bahagian sini. Yang merah ni eh. Pole location saya yang pertama. Yang merah ni eh. Ada pairs lah. Ada pairs lah ni eh. Pole location saya kat situ. Okey. Sebelah kiri uh, half plane ni. Uh, real as if. Uh, real as if. Uh, left half plane here. You can expect the exponential function of decaying exponential function like this. Okay, you can expect the decaying exponential uh, function like this. And then, for the right half plane of real as this, for this pole, for this particular pole, you can expect the, uh, the change of exponential function, which is exponential growth. Okay. So, this is actually represented by E to the ST. Uh, the other one just now was uh, related to E to the minus ST function. Okay, so kenapa E minus ST tu? Dia dia drop sampai dia menghampiri zero sebab uh, as the S approaching infinity for this particular equation, uh, <coughs> dia punya curve ataupun dia punya lines tu akan mendekati zero lah sebab equation ni sebenarnya one over E to the ST right? So, when ST is approaching infinity, 1 over infinity is 0. 
Okay. So you can expect the red one. Uh, if the post is right there, then it's the pair. If the pair of post is right there, you can expect this sort of uh, uh, stability response. Okay. As the hmm, faster the signal decay, sorry, uh, as the S pole is uh, jauh lagi, moving, apa, warna biru. As the pole uh, location moving menjauhi origin, menjauhi or ni origin, semakin jauh daripada origin, you can expect this uh, system response of something about very very uh, uh, fast decaying okay fast faster decay for this one for the right one it is the growth is the growth rate adalah lebih cepat lah okay macam decaying rate juga uh, kalau yang biru ni lebih cepat berbanding dengan yang merah Okay, apabila dia menjauhi origin, apabila pulse menjauhi origin, maksudnya kat sini, semakin jauh, semakin jauh, katalah point kat, kat mana-mana kat situ, dia semakin, makin uh, very stable lah. Ha, makin very stable. Okay, itu adalah berkaitan dengan real exist pulse. Ha? Real exist lah, real exist. How about imaginary? <coughs> So real exist is about uh, exponential function is it whether it is decaying or growth okay for the imaginary exist here it is about oscillation this is about a uh, trigonometric function this is about not trigonometric it's about uh, oscillation or sinusoidal or, or waveform lah sinusoidal function which is kalau a uh, point to pole to berada dekat dengan origin Katalah pulse tu berada pada exist, uh, atas exist imaginary ni. Uh, tapi pada zero. Okay, uh, sorry. Uh, let's say the pulse location is right here. Let's say the pulse location is like, like right here, the yellow one, the pair of pulse location. So you will expect the oscillatory uh, function of that one. Okay. For any case of the pole location is menjauhi okay menjauhi origin let's say for this particular location on the s plane you will expect higher frequency oscillations like this higher frequency oscillation okay yang kuning tu a bit lower uh, frequency and the, the purple one is higher frequency so each location in the s plane uh, actually describe the behavior of uh, whether it's oscillatory, transient, or decaying, or growing, growth, decaying, oscillatory, how, how is the rate of the oscillatory uh, function that? So it is about uh, everything about stability actually. So let's say I have a system like this. So something that is decaying. So lagi cepat dia decay. Let's say for this one, mungkin dia lagi cepat. Eh? Macam tu. Lagilah stable lah. Lagi cepat dia decay, lagilah stable. Okay. Lagi cepat dia dapat track di reference ni, lagi cepat lah. Lagi stable lah sistem itu. Maksudnya macam tu. Eh? So, it's about uh, exponential function and also di, <coughs> nampak tak yang purple tu? Sebenarnya uh, ni exponential function ni ni exponential function eh? and then dia ada oscillatory juga maksudnya a combination of uh, sine or cosine with the exponential kalau Fourier awak jumpa Fourier ke apa uh, kan dia combination of exponential function and uh, cosine function in time domain what you see is like that lah. so imaginary value of the value of the uh, poles on the S plane is the related to the oscillatory, 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 oscillation. Okay. Further, the poles are from the real line faster the oscillation lah. 
Okay, if we combine all of those, let's say tadi post berada pada exist, ya. Tadi post berada kat sini, kat sini, 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 kan. Sini, sini. Let's say uh, if we have the post right here, you should expect the uh, system uh, system uh, stability performance like this lah. Di campur ah, uh, combination of the exponential function and the oscillatory function. Okay habis. Okay habis. That was a bit of explanation lah, for you to understand the root locus concept. You should also understand. Uh, the stability, uh, how to interpret the location of poles on the S plane so that we can get <clears throat> so that we can get uh, stability eh, criteria of our system that we design. For example, if I I have another maybe around uh, 10 minutes eh, for this particular S plane, for example, if I want to get a stability, the stable area, eh, a stable area, of our system, I should expect that my post location should be should be kat mana? My post location should be uh, something around left half plane lah. Okay. So the more is my post is moving to the left, this becomes more stable. Okay. So this is the stable region, more stable region. Eh? Okay, kalau kawasan-kawasan ni, let's say kawasan yang ber, kawasan ni, yang dekat kosong untuk real exist ini, uh, this is what we call as marginal stability. Eh? Okay. So, uh, uh, origin kat mana? Siapa tak tahu origin, dia buta map lah. Okay. <laughs> okay. So, origin adalah sini ya. Eh. So, that is origin. Alright. So, this is real as this. Okay, saya nak tulis balik ya. Eh, dengan, uh, I'm going to use the yellow one. Okay, so that is real as this, real as this represented by sigma. Okay, and the vertical as this is imaginary as this. We represent it as a uh, frequency function. Okay, frequency function which is omega. So this is the S plane lah. This is the representation of S plane, S domain lah. So far, kita dah belajar paling simple Cartesian domain. Okay. Polar rectangular uh, domain. And then, uh, dalam mechanics kan, dah belajar kan. Uh, cylindrical coordinate system, Cartesian coordinate system. Bila uh, maths uh, ada Z plane, Zalani plane lah. Z plane, uh, frequency, Uh, Z plane kan? Uh, omega frequency uh, exist. Bila awak plot apa-apa eh, yang berkaitan dengan frekuensi, ini frekuensi, ini awak punya apa-apalah magnitude ke apa. So, you boleh identify ini apa, ini apa, ini apa. Frekuensi komponen. Dalam kita buat analisis material, contohnya kita buat FFT, kita buat FFT, uh, Fourier trans FTIR uh, machine tu kan, FTIR. Kita nak tengok uh, frekuensi komponen of that particular material. Kalau katalah material tu macam ni, okay, kita kenal ini adalah zinc contoh. Macam tu kan. Yang saya faham macam tu lah dari segi konsepnya. Apa alat uh, FTIR tu buat eh. Okay. Uh, sekian, sekian nak habis lah. Okay, uh, apa lagi? So, uh, kalau sebelah kiri tu adalah stable region. 
So sebelah kanan adalah unstable region. Ya. Okay, jangan tersalah. So imaginary exist, real exist, stable region, marginal stability, origin. So we would expect that our uh, uh, system is stable enough if we find that our root location or root locus is uh, concentrating on the uh, left half plane of the uh, S plane. Uh, left half uh, area of the uh, S plane. Okay. So I think it's already finished uh, for our discussion here about uh, topic three. I have just finished uh, discussing about some motivation in our earlier meeting uh, today. And then after that, I move, have moved to the introduction. Okay. And then uh, I've just finished just now uh, 3.2, which is which was related to a uh, concept of root locus. So moving on on uh, on on next week hopefully uh, i can finish some other uh, notes and also lecture slides so that i can share with you so for this one i will share later just after this okay uh, so i'll see you again later inshallah in our next session so i'm pause